Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm Reverend Jan Wade, one of the pastors here today. It's a wonderful day in our church, All Saints Day, and most of our worship, or all of our worship, will be focused on our saints today. Uh, we're so uh, uh, happy that you have have joined us this morning, and I want to call you your attention to just a few uh, items that are coming up that you won't want to miss. Uh, first of all, this afternoon from one o'clock to three o'clock, you are invited to come here to our church and pray, light a candle, say a prayer for one of the saints in your lives, and stay here and be at prayer, either here at the altar or in one of the pews, and there will be here people here to guide you through that. And that's one to three this afternoon. And then on Monday night, we will have a service of uh, prayer actually two times. It will be at 1215 and at 7 p.m. in our parish hall. And this is prayers for the nation. But we think it's a good time as we approach election day to remember that we serve the Almighty God. And no matter what happens, the Lord is with us. And then finally, I wanted to mention to you that on Saturday, we hope that you will uh, watch for notices about the mission collection pickup, which will be here at the church, but you will receive notice about what time you may drop off your, uh, your gifts for our missions here at Church Street. Again, thank you for being with us, and we hope that you find this worship time a blessing. May the Lord be with you now and in, in all this hour to come.
with you. Let us pray. O God of unfailing light, in your realm of glory the poor are blessed, the hungry filled, and every tear is wiped away. Strengthened by this vision, may we follow in the way of holiness that your Son made known to us in life and death and in life beyond death. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to invite all the children to gather up, get comfy, and listen up. Today is All Saints Day. And that's a day that we get to celebrate those who have gone before us and are in heaven, and we know that they're watching down on us. Now, if you watched at the beginning of the service, you got to see this really cool banner. It's got bells and ribbon all over it. Do you hear it? It makes a really pretty sound. It's called a tintinabular. Can you say it? Tintinabular. And this banner is a reminder for us of all of those who are in heaven. Each bell is one person who somebody lost, but we know that they're up in heaven looking down on us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we know this is not the end for those who die before us. We ask that we can remember all those around us who might have lost someone special. We ask that we can be kind to those who are going through a hard time grieving. We pray all of this in your son's name. Amen. Thank you to all of you who came last Sunday afternoon to drop off your commitment card. It was good to see you. And thank you to those of you who have mailed it in uh, or have made a commitment online. These are tangible ways that we show our thanksgiving to God for all that God has given to us. And it does help us in our planning for next year as we think about ministry and mission uh, that goes on here at Church Street United Methodist Church. So we do give thanks to God for all of his good gifts and we thank you for being faithful in your commitment. Good morning. Will you join me in our prayer for illumination? God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we hear your word today and we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from Revelation 7, 9 through 17, and I am reading from the Common English Bible translation. After this, I looked, and there was a great crowd that no one could number. They were from every nation, tribe, people, and language. They were standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They wore white robes and held palm branches in their hands. They cried out with a loud voice, Victory belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood in a circle around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell face down before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and always. Amen. Then one of the elders said to me, Who are these people wearing white robes, and where do they come from? I said to him, Sir, you know. Then he said to me, These people have come out of great hardship. They have washed their robes and made them white in the Lamb's blood. This is the reason they are before God's throne. They worship him day and night in his temple, and know, and the one seated on on the throne will shelter them. They won't hunger or thirst anymore. No sun or scorching heat will beat down on them because the lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them. He will lead them to the springs of life-giving water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today is a day of remembrance. The first Sunday of November, the saints in our lives all seem to draw closer to us, and well, they should. Today, I'm thinking about my own mother, dead now for many years, 
but I remember her shouldering so many duties without complaint, feeding seven kids, sewing most of our clothes, making sure we were in church at least three times a week. And I'm certain I never thanked her properly, but one day I shall. Monday was always wash day in our home, and after we kids had left for school, Mama would gather up all of the laundry and pull all the sheets off the bed, and she would plunge everything into hot, sudsy water in her Kenmore washer. With the white garments, she took the most care. She was the queen of Tide and Clorox, for dinginess in our home was not acceptable. She was always adding brighteners to the shirts and the blouses and the sheets especially. In those early years without a clothes dryer after rinsing and wringing, I remember that she would hang out like a mile of white sheets on the clothesline out back. And they all were there breathe, uh, just waving in the breeze during the day uh, until they dried. And when we exited the school bus in the afternoon, just far off, we could see these sheets. And they looked like vast ivory sails on some mighty ship. Perhaps our clothes were not the best, but they certainly were the cleanest. And come nighttime, crawling beneath the covers was heavenly. The fragrance of the outdoors clung to those spotless sheets, and the sweet-smelling aroma just sifted through our dreams. Well, we know that John of Patmos, the writer of our Revelation passage that uh, Reverend Best just read, we know he had no clean linens on which to lie, for he was hunched down in exile in the grime of his hideaway. His sleep must have been fitful as well, for day after day from his darkened cave overlooking the Aegean Sea, he either watched or received word of one by one his parishioners, members of his own church, being marched off they were being taken away by the Roman government to be beaten, to be fed to the lions or torched. What was their sin? They clung to the Christian faith. John probably wondered just when the authorities were going to come to him, for him. In his pitiful circumstance, how he must have longed for a word of hope to share with his congregation. How he deeply wanted to remind them that they had not been forgotten and that all would be well and that suffering was not the end of their story. His desire, as we know from the scripture passage, was met with an astonishing gift of visions. John was granted a peek behind the curtain into heaven to see what awaited those who were enduring earthly trials. His experiences are full of mystery and wonder about this world beyond words. In a place where all our cherished ones are now sheltered for all time by God himself. Now, in the first eight verses of this chapter, which are not part of our reading today, he talks about the people from the 12 tribes of Israel, and he's very careful with his counting. He counts among 12,000 from each of these tribes, making up a total of 144,000, he says, who are there in this heavenly kingdom and 144,000 is a perfect number in biblical terms. But in the vision detail today, John of Patmos spied a multitude of people from every nation, from every era, too many to even count. People of all languages and races and colors, young and old, male and female, more people than he had ever seen in one place at any one time and they were all dressed in snowy white, he records, and they were waving palm branches and they were singing, salvation belongs to our God. And as John is standing slack-jawed there at this vision, he turns and an elder also in this vision turns and asks him, who are these clothed in white and where did they come from? And before John could even fashion an answer, 
The man explains, these are the faithful ones who have come through the great tribulation. They have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and made them pure. Now we don't know, but John may have recognized some of the folks there in that vision. It may be they were some of the triumphant ones from his own church. But hailing from a conservative Jewish background, John must have been stunned to see some of the folks that he might have considered outsiders. For there were among them so many descriptions. There were people from lands he never knew existed. Perhaps we too hold a nearer view of that heavenly kingdom. We may have in our own minds who just will and will not be rejoicing there in heaven. Still, it appears that inclusivity, not exclusivity, is the byword in that heavenly realm. For you and I can never predict whose heart is filled with the love of Christ. At this juncture, John and the rest of us are reminded that the arms of the cross stretch far wider than we can ever imagine, from shore to shore, from ocean to ocean, far as farther even than human imagination. So there is no way we could measure the arms of the cross, the love of our God. In that province, behind the veil, there will be no more us and them. There are no demarcations of blue and red, of race, race and rank, of wealth or prestige, no pedigrees, no boundaries. Those who do the will of Christ will be there, and each will be wrapped in a snowy white garment. This incalculable number and diversity made a lasting impression on John because he mentions it seven times in his writings. Now, Paul speaks of the saints as not only those who have died, but those who spend their days worshiping and living out the faith in spite of their troubles. Give my best wishes to the saints, Paul often begins and ends his letters. To the apostle, you see, a saint is anyone who has kept the faith, kept moving ahead in spite of the roadblocks. Just last February, we had no idea just what the year was going to hold for us. This pandemic has been brutal and deadly, and uncertainty certainly has ruled the day, has it not? But ever so often along the way, we receive glimpses of hope and newness. And at some point, we finally grasp the, the truth that we are all in this together. With John's panoramic scene running in the background of my mind, a memory sprung up, and it happened at the end of March 2020. One of the TV networks featured a story of another event it took place in Spain, and this is one of the regions that was hardest hit by the COVID-19 virus, you may remember. City officials in the town of Santander realized how much they owed their healthcare teams, who were working at great risk, putting their lives at risk to benefit the whole city. So quietly, they put together a celebration of thanks. They enlisted fire trucks and police cruisers and SUVs and all these oversized vehicles. And one bright sunny morning, they festooned them with these bright placards and these banners and bunting expressing gratitude. Then a slew of government workers hopped on board and complete with blaring music, they made their noisy way through the streets of the city. And as they did, they attracted more and more crowds along the way. So finally they stopped in front of Marques de Silla University Hospital. Hearing the commotion, a mass of people came to the front doors, finally opened them, and then they came out and lined the front steps. They were technicians and pharmacists and nurses and doctors and administrators. 
The company included folks of all descriptions, Orientals and Hispanics, dark-skinned, light-skinned, young and old, short and tall. And the majority were wearing immaculate white lab coats, surgical caps, and scrubs. For these few minutes, grimness and suffering were set aside. Smiling ecstatically, I remember that these workers were uh, dancing and singing, moving to in time to the music and smiling and having such a great time and the rhythm was wonderful that came from the loudspeakers. It was a blessed celebration of hope and togetherness. I don't know it for sure, but I imagine also the, memories, the members of the laundry staff were also in attendance that day, for we know how important they were. They were the ones who washed and bleached the scrubs, who ironed and starched the lab coats, and who provided spotless sheets for all the beds of those who were ill. And afterwards, when it was all over, the hospital workers went right back up the steps, opened the doors, and disappeared. They assumed the same risk and labored the same long hours. But somehow, everything was different because, you see, they had not been forgotten. In our appointed gospel lesson that accompanies the Revelation text, Jesus, in Matthew, is sitting among his followers on a hillside. They have endured much, and he reminds these weary people that the ones in heaven, the ones in heaven will have healing, but he also shares with them a bit of a healing word. He tells them they are not forgotten. Blessed are the poor in spirit, he says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Now, our government may not be tracking us down to murder us because of our faith, but we have all seen great tribulations this year. And so I can picture Jesus now sitting here with us today, and he's telling us in our midst that we are not forgotten. Blessed are you, he says, who care for the ill spouse, who care for the Alzheimer's victim, the special needs child, or the parent in hospice care. Blessed are you who worry about family members enduring wildfires and tropical storms. Blessed are you who have had to bury your loved one without friends nearby to help you mourn. Blessed are you who for months have been unable to touch your relative isolated in a residential facility. And blessed are you who are lonely and depressed, who wait for that phone call that seldom comes. Blessed are you whose business has all but dried up, yet the bills always arrive on time. And blessed are you who carry on in faith, even though your own heart is breaking. John's ancient vision gave us hope. It gave, just as it gave hope to his people there in his church. Our loved ones, all who have suffered physically or emotionally in this life, are now freed in this life to come. What a comfort to picture their, them there taking their places among that heavenly multitude. Our bell banner, which, on which we have sewn 566 bells, one for each of the saints, you have asked us to remember these past four years. Their names are also written on our banner in gold. These are the ones who have made a profound difference in our lives. And when we hear the bells process and ring uh, when we are walking in or walking out with this banner, that ringing uh, 
we give thanks for each of those saints who have helped to make us who we are, who have instilled in us the faith that we have. But I also like to think that when the, we hear the bells ringing, it's the saints ringing for us. They're reminding us to hold on tightly to our faith and not to let go. And one day, we will all board that ship of tomorrow and we will join that great cloud of witnesses. We will also wash our robes until they are spotless and shine like the sun. And we will sail away and join in that mighty anthem in the sky, all together singing, salvation belongs to our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen.
Will you join me in an affirmation from Romans chapter 8, verses 35, 37 through 39? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things you we are more than conquerors through the one who has loved us. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus our Lord, thanks be to God. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? O loving God, we remember when your son Jesus Christ was with his disciples, his friends, for a final teaching. He shared with them from the depths of his heart as he talked about his impending death and his absence from them. He also spoke of life and comfort. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he said to us. I go to prepare a place for you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. He promised us comfort and peace, his peace, not as the world gives, but your peace, O oh God. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he said, and do not let them be afraid. O oh, gracious God, who knows all that is in our hearts, we offer them to you this morning. On this All Saints Day, some are grieving deeply, the pain of loss still raw. Others are able to quietly celebrate the gift of eternal life and the assurance of being joined together again. Some of our hearts are troubled by events going on now, illness in our families, economic uncertainty, political turmoil, injustices, and honestly, oh God, sheer exhaustion from a pandemic. We hear, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. May we lean into those words, O oh God, so that we, your saints, who are here on earth, still physically alive, may be spiritually alive in you. We want to be faithful saints who work together with you on that vision of a new reality where there is no more hunger and no more thirst. May we put our trust in you, the Lamb of God, who is our shepherd. We look to your Son, O oh God, and affirm that our hearts will not be troubled or afraid, but calmed by you. We thank you for your peace and for the gift of your Holy Spirit. We join with all the saints, those on earth and those in heaven, as we offer our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We receive the blessing. Friends, let us go forth in peace, remembering that we are beloved beyond measure by God and that we are called to be God's saints at work in the world. And so let us go forth strong in heart and mind, believing that at some future time, we will all gather with the saints above in that celestial home made by our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace.